There is a place on Northern Point I need not tell you more, since nothing is quite as famous as William Piercy's store. Between the Holland and the Jiggin, between the storm and the tide, when the ocean is in motion, the doors are open wide. It is a place where men may meet all through their weary lives. It's a haven from the ocean and a heaven from their wives. It is called the House of Commons, and rightly I am sure, for everything is talked about in William Piercy's store. Hi, I'm Bailey White and this is Undecided. We chose this beautiful spring day to visit some hallowed halls. Forget Confederation Building, forget the Colonial Building. No, today we're going to the House of Commons. Welcome to the House of Commons. I know it looks a little smaller than it does on the news. We're here with three honorable members. Let's get them to introduce themselves. I'm John Warren. Nice to meet you, John. Frank Berthe. Frank. And I'm Ed Arnott. Ed, thank you for joining us here. Who can tell me, John, maybe you can tell me a little bit about the history of this building. Well, this, this is what your traditional uh, fisherman's uh, twine store it was built back in 56, I think it was, Frank. 56. Right, 56, yeah. Uh, by a fisherman. and. Uh, keep all his fishing supplies here in the winter time and that and twine and nets and that of course and then it quickly became a place where fishermen and other people would congregate to sit down and discuss everything from apples to fishing uh, issues and regulations and so on. Why here? I, I really don't know. Uh, it's, it's, uh, what, what attracted people to here? Frank, do you know? Well, just. We had the store and we opened it up and made the fire going and the judges gathered in yeah. and they went from there. Every now and then someone come in, come in for a little argument and, <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's uh, what we've come. Yeah. yeah. So Frank, this is your father's store originally, right? That's right, yeah. And he built it in 56, you said? Yes. So you'd be a young boy when these first few arguments were starting up. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then uh, 2009, uh, it all fell down. And in 2009, we uh, we rebuilt it again. Really? Yeah. It, I didn't realize it had fallen down completely. Yeah, yeah. We were just the walls were all founded in. We just me and my son and my grandson mm -hmm. built it up again. And w what compelled you to do that? Why did you want to build it up again? Well, the air just got after. They want, want us to do it. And yeah. That's what we. Uh, that's what we done. And Ed, I know you're involved with the Heritage Society, so tell me a little bit about, you know, from, from your perspective, why is this an important building? Well, we in Harris Content have a very long history. We, we go way back to the 1600s. But if you were here 50 years ago, this is very different today. There were fishing premises all along this shore here, what, what we call the Northern Point. And there were wharves, there were flakes, there were stores. And... This is one of the, if, if, well, I believe this is the only remaining store from that period. And, and uh, we believe in, in historic preservation and, and in trying to keep the things that are worth keeping mm -hmm. alive. And uh, really, you would, not have, you, know, you would not recognize this place today compared to the way it was 50 years ago. And this, this though, is part of what it was like. Mm -hmm. So how much like the original store is this is this what you've rebuilt? It's pretty well the same. It's pretty it's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. 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 And do you remember ever coming in as a young boy and kind of listening in on some of the arguments in that? All the time. We've been there all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we get so far as the door, myself yeah. and buddies up our own, you know, same age, and all the men will be in here talking and yarning. Of course, you you'd never say anything or interrupt or. You'd never do that, so we stay here for a while, and after the argument was over, <laughs> well, do we go on again then? But yeah, I think I think I can hear somebody cursing and swearing on Joey Smallwood in the background there now. <laughs> <laughs> and it, is that what it was about, like politics and things of that nature? Well, it, everything. Yeah. yeah, politics. Politics was a big thing, but yeah, and uh, drawing for Bert and all this kind of stuff. This was the this was the big thing. Mm -hmm. Used to draw for Trap Bert. Uh, for setting your card traps and that kind of stuff. Right. That was that was one of the big things. That was your livelihood, right? Really. Yeah, yeah. 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 John, anything you particularly remember? You know, standing in the door, trying to get an ear in, trying to get an eye in. Do you remember any arguments or any big topics? 
you know, you was, when we got on the go, it'd be what we call duckish or half dark, and you go in, and if there was any light here, it'd be pretty, pretty dim. And you see one fella lying back on the twine with one leg up on the crazy and perhaps getting a smoke or someone else, perhaps having a nap, somebody be nodding, you know. But there'd always be a conversation about something and everything. And uh, I remember one of the big things that uh, was discussed way early, early in the early 60s, Frank here won a color television. <laughs> and we all, when we came in, everybody was talking with the color television, so nothing for us to do, our young boys was going to see the the, the color television, the first one on the point, if I'm not yeah, mistaken. That's yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, yeah. how did you win it? I won it up to uh, bought gas up to uh, there the crossroads, and uh, that's what it was. Uh, color television. It was a '66. No, come on, yeah, yeah, '66. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah, '66. Come on, yeah, and that's what I won the color television. I had two dollars for the gas. <laughs> <laughs> how old would you have been then? Fifty. <laughs> so, 20, 21. Twenty. So you rebuilt in 2009, and suddenly you got a crowd in again. Oh, yes. How'd uh, that happen? Well, me and Jared Lane was uh, talking there one evening. That's what we brought up. Jared brought up. We two good people come in. And that's what we started. We started on a, used to come Saturday evening thing. Yeah. And then that, that went out, and then we started coming uh, every night after supper, after we get our supper. And and this is a House of Commons, so any rules of decorum or anything like that? No, anything no, that no rules. <laughs> no, no, they got a, no smoking on the door, but I don't think too many eats that one. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about the past. I want to ask you a little bit about what life is like in Hearts Content now. So, Ed, maybe tell me a little bit about the community and where we are and who lives here. Well, it's a vibrant community, although we have, as in uh, many parts of Newfoundland, we've, we've seen a decline in, in population. But uh, I find it's a very vibrant... I moved here 10 years ago, so I'm the, I'm the new man on the block, right. new kid in town kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but I have roots here. I, you know, I've been uh, visiting Heart's Content ever since I was a little boy. My mom is from here, my grandparents on her side of family from here, and so on. So I've been coming here since I was a uh, preteen. Uh, so I can somewhat compare what it was like then to what it, was, what it is like now. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I see, and you can see as you go around town, you'll see some new building going on, some new construction, some homes being restored. So I think there's a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of vibrancy in the community. There's a lot of activity going on. And I certainly uh, have been you know, delighted that I, I decided to move here 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it's a fishing community, still a fishing community, and, and uh, crab fishing especially. And so when it comes to the upcoming election, a lot of, uh, a lot of people here are concerned about the fishery, state of the fishery, and uh, as I say, especially the crab fishery. And uh, of course, there's a lot of other issues, muskrat fowls and, and so on. Well, Frank, what, what changes do you see from, say, back when you won that color TV to now? Well, big changes, yeah. <laughs> big changes in that. We've had school closures and uh, the cable office, of course, as uh, as you know, the big uh, was the big employer back a hundred years ago, and uh, of course that's closed and it's become a museum now. Of course, we get a lot of tourist tourists uh, coming to the area, which we never before the cable office closed. Of course, we never had a lot of tourists, but since they've they've made it a museum, we get a lot of tourism here in the town. A lot of tourists have come down this way to see the House of Commons here, to see the lighthouse. Uh, we were talking about it earlier on. I mean, we've had marriages taking place out there. Uh, we've had, uh, you know, uh, engagements and proposals and wedding pictures, everything takes, uh, it's a very popular place on the shore. And, uh, you know, we've, we've got a new art center here now. Uh, of course, as, as buildings close down, the, the town, and in this case, our heritage group acquired the the United Church had turned it into an art center, and it's a it's a beautiful place there. We get a lot of a uh, lot of entertainment performances there, so it's uh, yeah, it's 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 a nice little town here now. But it's still traditional. Yeah. People still do a lot of uh, fishing is still the main industry here. A lot of hunting goes on here, and uh, so it's it's traditional still in a lot of ways. When I came out as a little boy in the 1950s, there were 
fish flakes everywhere, wharves everywhere, stages and, and stores. There was sheep shit everywhere, sheep everywhere, <laughs> flies everywhere. So there's a townie now coming out and I'm thinking, I don't know if I'd want to live there. Now I'm living here, and, but it's a very different place. Yeah. Very different place, and and of course the roads weren't paved back then. To come across the barrens, it took three times as long and mm -hmm. very dusty. But now, of course, it's paved, and and you've got all the modern conveniences you could want here. Yeah. And uh, so it's it's a modern little rural community, and and a very vibrant one, as I've said before. You three are all retired. Yep. Yeah, pretty yeah. near. Yeah. Now, is, is, there, is there much opportunity, do you think, in the area for, for young people or young families sort of starting out? Sure. I, I mean, you know, uh, we're just 15 minutes away from Carbonair and an uh, hour and a half at the most of St. John's. And for some people in Canada, an hour and a half commute is not very long. You know, now we, we don't have as many young people as we used to, but it's, uh, you know, you get the odd one coming in. So what's on your mind when it comes to the uh, the next election, and uh, what do you want to hear oh, from candidates? I, I don't, I don't listen to them. I try to stay away from them. <laughs> do you vote? I vote, yeah. 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 John, what about I yourself? Do, uh, tourism. We we should be able to capitalize more on tourism here, mm. and uh, and and the whole province, of course, is seeing an upswing in tourism, and uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, if, if I talk to a politician or any politician, I think that's what I'd like to know, what, what can they do for, to increase the tourists coming here to Hearts and to the area, of course. It's good for the whole area. You know, we talked about the Performing Arts Centre here. Is that something that's sort of on your radar, something important to you as voters? Well, to me personally, being a part of the group that uh, restored the old church into a Performing Arts Centre is very important. Mm -hmm. And I think we've done a lot uh, to bring entertainment to Hearts Content that would not normally, not only to Hearts Content, but to the region, mm -hmm. that would not normally uh, have performed here. Mm -hmm. And we've had some great, uh, we've had about 15 concerts now over the past year and a half, and we have a monthly coffee house, and uh, all of this entertainment would not be here I, if it wasn't for that arts center. So I think provincial government, federal government funding for the arts is very, very important. In the spirit of this place, I do want to get into an argument with you now, though, because lots of arguing gone on here. We're talking about arts. I mean, some people are going to say, that's lovely, but we have a huge budget crisis. We need to focus on the essentials, health care, electricity rates, you know, paving roads. What do you say to people who say, those are our priorities, this is where we've got to spend our money, because frankly, we don't have any money? Well, what value do you place on pride for example and the pride that you might feel when when uh, a Newfoundlander uh, writes a song and has it become a, 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 an important anthem or hit even not only provincially but elsewhere like when a Newfoundland artist perhaps like Alan Doyle or uh, you know Great Big Sea and, and so many others Ron Hines for example and, and the music that he's produced uh, how much pride do we feel and, and how important is that to our culture uh, and to our being as Newfoundlanders? Not only the, the uh, music and songs, but also the theatre that we've produced, the comedians especially come to mind and, and the contribution we've made nationally to, to entertainment. Uh, ask yourself how important that is. Yes, there are other priorities, but I certainly think that this type of thing is a priority too. Mm. And John, you know, similarly, there's people out there who, who still think that resettlement is something that, that the government should be considering instead of investing in rural, just the opposite. I mean, what do you say? Can we, can we afford to, to invest in rural communities? Well, well obviously, some, some, some small communities are, are, are down to one or two people, and you know, they, they can't expect the, the, the same services that larger areas would get. But you, you can get some parts of the, of the province where uh, you, you know, you get uh, uh, communities joining together mm -hmm. and becoming a regional, a regional uh, section, and, and that would get services for all for all of them. And and I think that's one possible way. But uh, you know, you you just can't you just can't uh, let let Oport, Newfoundland die. I mean, it's, it's it's too important to our culture, to our heritage, and and to 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 the country. Mm -hmm. I mean. Uh, 
most of Canadians live, live in, in cities. And, uh, you know, they, these people don't know what they're missing. Some of them, they, they've never been outside of a city. They don't know what it's like to, to hear the water wash up on the beach or, or you know, just go for a walk somewhere in, in, and fresh air is, is unknown to them. So that, that's too important to, to let slide. Seems to me we're being discovered by a lot of that, you know, uh, St. John's, Mount Pearl, CBS area because we're getting a lot of people coming out here, some to retire, uh, like myself, others who are buying uh, houses out here and, and coming out uh, in the summer times and uh, maybe plan to retire eventually. So there is that happening. So the future is bright. Sure it is. Yeah, yeah. yes. In spite of all the townies we're getting here. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found the leader of the opposition. Townies are what to become Bayman. <laughs> Well, townies, baymen alike, <laughs> honorable members, thank you very much for your time. You're very welcome, dear. And thank you for watching. I'm Bailey White. This has been Undecided.